What's up everyone, Dwayne here signing in with another video. This is gonna be all about bike packing gear and I wanna show you what I'm gonna be packing for an up and coming three day, two night bike packing trip that I had planned out in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. So I'm gonna show you how to put all this gear on this bike. I'm gonna walk you through what I'm packing, its purpose and everything from start to finish pretty much. Uh, so this is gonna be a, a pretty long video, so tune in. Before we do that, I wanna share with you all the coffee that I'm drinking. Um, if you know me, you know that I love coffee and will travel for it. And this is a recommended coffee for all those coffee lovers out there. So before we get started with the gear packing, check out the coffee that I'm drinking. If you are a coffee lover like I am, I highly recommend this coffee from Trader Joe's that I picked up called Columbia Aponte Honey. It is a nice medium roast whole bean coffee I ground it up obviously in my grinder and generally make flat white espressos with it really good coffee highly recommend for a good start to the morning all right everyone so back outside here and a little bit of context as to why I chose the Puerto Vallarta Mexico bikepacking trip first off Puerto Vallarta is a place I've always wanted to visit in Mexico uh, it really pulled me in because I'm a big fan of like coastal cities but coastal cities that have like mountainous regions in its backdrop so I'm talking like cities like Rio de Janeiro if that's a city that like comes to mind you know and I'm sure there are others around the world but um, you know Puerto Vallarta is a place where I've always wanted to go check out uh, there's lots of great mountain biking there and so the route that I developed is uh, a first at least from my experience it's one I've been planning for quite some time I developed it around um, staying on the coastal area and it's going to be going into the mountains on day one so it's a really big climb uh, then it drops out of the mountains for a really big descent and back toward the, the coast and that's where I'm going to be staying day, day two and after that I'm going to be riding back into Puerto Vallarta to wrap up day three but um, I'm really excited about it and I wanted to just walk you all through uh, the gear that I'm going to be using for that trip now this particular trip is I feel like I'm a first explorer because uh, at least from what I know I haven't really been seeing any already established bikepacking routes out there. So I developed this route using um, a combination of Gaia GPS, um, a little bit of Kumut, as well as Rabbit GPS and combined trails from the locals that I've uh, did a ton of research on. And so, yeah, uh, it's a little bit scary. And like, you know, my heart is pumping knowing that like, you know, I haven't seen anyone ride over there on these trails before. Uh, that's recorded or reported, if you will, but um, they are like mountain bike trails and gravel trails and fire roads and things like that. Um, a little bit of hiking trails, a lot of road as well um, on day two. So uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But um, I am excited about it because, you know, the success of this trip will, you know, be able to be shared. And that means that other people can, can use my route that I developed to to do it for themselves. So here's the gear. I'm gonna just jump on a step ladder here so I can just show you like a nice bird's eye view of what I have going on. So I have this gear here that's gonna be going on this gravel bike here. Let me just zoom in a little bit on the gear and I'm gonna walk you through from left to right of what we got. Okay, so from the top left, we're gonna work all the way to the right and you know go down the rows here. But at the top left, we have the Sweet Roll. And on the right of that, we have another one. The one on the left is a 15 liter by Rebel 8 Designs. Really nice size. Uh, what's good about that one is that, you know, it's a lot of volume. So you can just like stuff everything in top of it, like stacked, and then really like compress it down on its sides. Whereas the 11 liter on the right is a little bit narrower in terms of volume, but uh, really small for like a gravel bike handlebar and everything, which might work. So I'm trying to see if I want to use the smaller 11, liter volume versus the 15. Right underneath it I have the, uh, oh and what's going to be inside there is, um, I should mention that, is going to be my tent. The one person tent right here is the Tuck Tent Moment DW. That's the one that I have. It's a really lightweight one person tent. Um, the poles aren't in it right now. I actually have it in my Tangle frame bag which is inside there. They are all carbon fiber 
poles that I had upgraded to to make the whole setup a little bit lighter. And uh, the tent's been working out for me. I've been using it. I've used it like a maybe like two bypacking trips so far. Um, one in New Mexico, and I forget where the other one was, but um, they've served me well. Um, I'm also going to be stuffing my sleeping pad in there as well, which is right there next to my one liter bladder. And I'm also going to be putting my clothing, which is inside this um, dry bag right here by Sea to Summit. Again, moving back up to the top, the frame bag, I have inside there right now my tent poles, but I'm also going to be putting my first aid kit, which is right there inside of it. I'm going to also throw my sandals inside there, which aren't pictured in this video. That's going to be going in there. Um, my air pump is going to be also going in there. And also maybe my extra inner tube might go in there. I'm going to be putting my headlamp, which is right there inside there as well. And that might be it. Maybe like snacks and stuff. We'll see. But um, to the right of that, I have the Revelate Designs shoe. The shoe is pretty sweet. Um, it's a medium sized bag. It can pack down really, really small. And inside that, I'm gonna stuff my waterproof rain jacket along with like my first aid kit might going there instead of going inside of, of there. So the whole idea with packing things in first are things that I likely won't need right away and then keeping the things that's more accessible right at the end of the bag. So for instance, if it starts to have a downpour because it is rainy season, um, I might need quick access to my rain jacket. So I'm gonna have that accessible in the back of that bag as soon as I unroll it. Um, to the right of that, I have the Tango, which is the handlebar bag that goes on top of the shoe. This is great for like quick access to things. If I wanna store like some, some electronics in here, I can do that. Um, these bags are all waterproof, so it's great that they can just roll down, you know, compact easy, and you can also throw in extra protection by stuffing things that are electronic into their own dry sacks, which is what I often do sometimes. So I have like my, for instance, my Fuji Film X100V uh, camera. I could possibly just put that in a dry bag and then just store it inside of here if I don't plan on shooting. But, uh, or if it gets really like inclement weather, you know, if it starts raining out of nowhere, I can just quickly throw it in there, throw it inside that, uh, that um, Tango handlebar bag and I'll be good to go. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a, a pretty hefty bag to have on deck, I feel like. Um, and I have other bags as well over here. I have the small bag on the right side, that's gonna go on the top tube. Um, that's gonna be great for like quick access. This one like right here, it's gonna be great for quick access. Uh, this goes on the top tube as well, but mainly like toward the seat post if I need some extra storage. So I might bring that. Below it are handle bag, uh, handle, handlebar water bottle bags. So I'll likely carry two of those on the bike. I'm not sure yet. I might just do one because I do have an extra one liter bladder right here. And then underneath, going from right to left, I have my pump, which is right there, an extra tube. I might bring a second one as well. And I have the tool cache, which is one of my favorite items from Revelit Designs, that tool cache right there. And I'm gonna just step off this uh, step ladder and get a little closer on this one because um, I really like this bag a lot. So basically, um, it stores everything I have in terms of what I need to fix my bike with. So tire boots inside here. Uh, I have two uh, tire levers, one by Wolf Tooth, which is acts as like a plier as well and a chain link. And I have one Pedro tire lever in case something goes south with one. Always have two with everything. I got two CO2 cartridges with me. Hopefully that gets past customs. Probably won't, but we'll see. If anything, I can stop at a bike shop to resupply on that. And then I have, inside here, I want to open it up, I have two Allen keys, uh, super lightweight, so I don't have to bring a multi-tool. So I have uh, one that's going to be for the front wheel, rear wheel. I need to switch up my through axles to make them the same size, so I can just carry one. Um, I have tools for the stem, um, if I need to loosen that, the seat post as well. Um, I also have a CO2 cartridge, chain link in here, extra chain. Uh, what else? I have some bacon in here, and in the event I get a flat tire something goes south. I am also gonna include some 
um, what is it, tire sealant in here so that in any event I need that I can just re-up on that in the tires here. And that's all packed into this little wallet size bag and you know this is a sweet sweet kit here from Revlet Designs. Um, I always like to put my clothing and since I'm doing like just three days, two nights, I only have like a couple pairs of shorts. I have uh, one bib and I'm gonna like use that for two nights. <laughs> so I'm just gonna wash it after the first ride. And I'll also have like just a plain, um, like super lightweight long sleeve ja uh, rain jacket. Um, so that's gonna be super, super nice. And this packs down really small and I can compress this further. So this is gonna go inside that um, sweet roll 15 liter or the 11 liter, I'm not sure yet. Uh, rain jacket here, really packable as well, really small, as well as my Thermarest is also pretty packable and small. One person tent, super packable. Uh, this is really nice actually, I've been using this. Love this tent, it's uh, a one person and just look how like that can compress down. You know, it's pretty small compared to like this one liter, all right? Not bad. Some scale for you and then I also uh, have the tent poles right inside my, my tango here. So this is a size large tango. So now the idea is to uh, to get all of this gear onto this gravel bike right here. So um, <laughs> here goes my attempt on doing that. So let's do it. Yeah, it started raining really hard. It's like obviously hurricane season here. So let's take this inside for a second. <laughs> Everyone picking up from where we left off. There's always obviously more sunshine after the rain. So I had loaded all the rest of the bags onto the bike. So let's go a little bit closer so I can just show you what we're working with here. All right, so this is what the bike turned out to look like with all the gear that you had seen on the floor just a little bit ago. I don't have the water bottles on here yet, but uh, and I don't have the bags attached, but I do have the main components set up, so this is what I'm going to be riding. This is what the bike's going to be looking like, and this is a new setup for me. I ditched the bigger uh, saddlebag that I would normally use for a bike packing trip, and figured since I'm only going to be camping uh, one night on this trip, and then the rest, the second night, which will be the last night, I'm going to stay at like uh, one of the hotels that I saw in the the small village I'm going to be going to and out in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, the hotels are really affordable so I'm, I should be able to get it for maybe like 40 bucks, maybe even um, a little bit less, less or more. Um, I'm not really sure and kind of going into it right now without anything booked. So um, I'm just going to sort of roll with the punches, keep the wheels turning and uh, hope for uh, a stay somewhere, you know, and if not, uh, I've done my research and you can camp in Mexico. So depending on where I am, I can probably find, um, somewhere to pitch my tent, whether it's on the coast over there. Uh, there is also like a reserve, a preserve over there too. I'm not sure if I can camp in there. I have to find out, but, um, I will, I will do all that. And just a little bit after this video is wrapped up. To get that dialed in 
Um, so let's talk more about the gear here that we have. So in the sweet row, which is up front here, this is the 15 liter I decided to go with for good reason. Again, it has a, a nice volume to it. And you can see that 15 liter volume, it's nice and wide and fat. So what that means is I can stack gear. So I have my sleeping pad toward the back. I have the clothing that I'm going to be using. Plus I have my tent in there as well. And uh, the form factor looks really good. And you can kind of get a gist of it here with my handlebars. And there's definitely like some space here between the left and the right grip on my handlebars. You can see how like that looks. And these are 44 centimeters wide, these handlebars for reference there. I have the egress pocket attached to that as well. Uh, right now, I just have my air pump in here. I might take that out and put that in the frame bag because I have ample space in here. And um, this will probably be for maybe something else. I'm not in quite, not quite sure just yet, but um, I might throw like an extra tube in here, maybe some, a, a, you know, a burrito perhaps, just for like a quick roadside snack um, or meal rather. <laughs> and. I'm not sure what I'll, I'm obviously going to put like some quick nutrition up in here, maybe some like um, nuts and mix, mixed trail nuts in here, maybe some uh, gummy bears, some quick sugars and stuff like that, some uh, electrolytes to just quickly throw in the bottle. And on this side, I'll probably put my water bottle cages here, those little bags I shared with you before. So I have two water bottles here two water bottles here and I have an extra one liter which I may or may not bring I'm not sure yet uh, the thing is with the route that I'm going to be riding there are lots of services nearby so I shouldn't be um, too isolated from services where I can get water and food for any additional recovery if I run out of things obviously when you're getting into a bike packing trip you want to plan out all your services ahead of time just to make sure that you may need to do an extended carry with the bike with your food on uh, stacked on top of it and stored but um, right now I'm looking pretty good as far as uh, my knowledge and the route planning that I've done so far um, in the back here you can see the saddlebag that I'm using the shrew is very very well packed here I have three items in here uh, at the seat post is the extra inner tube and then I have my first aid in the center and then I have my waterproof rain jacket which I can quickly press that release button and grab if I you know there's a downpour or anything and um, I won't be carrying a, a backpack which is really sweet definitely want to be able to free up my back for uh, from carrying anything I think uh, my body is going to be doing most of the riding and obviously all the riding and the carrying of this bike really so I need to uh, reserve any kind of energy I can for um, climbing on that first day because I have to go from sea level up to 4,000 feet of climbing and I have to do that all within 50 miles <laughs> so um, this is my current setup for this bike and uh, I'm riding the Ibis Haka MX uh, in terms of the components I have um, like I mentioned before I have the NV 44 millimeter handlebars on here. These are the G-Series gravel bar. Sporting that with the NV stem at 100 millimeters. It's nice and short for me because my arms are not very long. Um, but my legs are. <laughs> so uh, my torsos are pretty short so the reach that I need isn't very much. In terms of the wheels and the tires, I have the Pirelli Cinturado uh, gravel H in the front. And I have the gravel M, sorry, gravel M in the front for mixed terrain, and I have the H in the back, which is like for high pack. So I think I should be okay with that. Um, still has like ample grip, and these are 700 by 45 millimeters in terms of um, its uh, width. And I am on a 42 tooth sprocket. It's an Easton single ring, and I have 11. To 42 gears in the back in terms of my range so uh, I will be suffering quite a bit however uh, I do plan on just taking it pretty slow since I'm by myself I'll be solo on this trip so they'll give me an opportunity to just 
go at my own pace and really take in the scenery, really take in being by myself out here in the wild. I feel that I really become very creative when I'm out here on solo bikepacking trips. While it is a lot of fun to do it with people, which I really much enjoy doing with people, um, I do love going solo as well to experience it in a different kind of way. So uh, really excited about the trip and the setup. I will report back with obviously another video uh, once uh, this trip is all wrapped up so you all will be able to see uh, basically my results and everything and how everything turned out. So looking forward to sharing that with you all. Right now, if you have any questions about my setup with all the Revelate Design gears that I have, gear that I have wrapped around the Ibis Haka MX, just go ahead and drop it in the comments below. I can answer all the questions that you may have. And of course, if you're interested in checking out some of this gear that I'm using, I will leave all of the links to them below with a full list of everything that I'm using. You can also stop by DwaynePedals.com. And you'll be able to see the gear that I will be using for this trip. There should be a write-up with images on everything I'm using so that you can have that at your uh, disposal for anything that you might need to use it for in terms of referencing something for your own trip. And I feel like I've done enough talking. So <laughs> I'd love you all to like, comment, and subscribe if um, you know, I offer value in this video, of course. And if you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe for more. I uh, would love to be doing more trips like this, more gear packing, stuff like this. So give me a subscribe, share this with a friend who might be looking for to doing a bike pack trip of their own so they can use this video for inspiration. Uh, we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.